What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be breaking down the best and worst performances from this most recent week of the NFL. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Go to that link tree. You're two clicks away from going anywhere you want that's related to the show, including to my Twitter X page where I post all the time. A ton of great content there, including all 22 clips that I do for my scouting reports that ends up explaining my board that are in the majority of my other videos. Of course, you get to use that top link for Underdog Fantasy. You get up to a thousand in bonus cash free. So feel free to use that. They sent me 60 bucks full transparency, but at the same time, I actually love the brand. They treat you well. They treat me well, a lot different than some of the other sponsors we've had before. If you guys do end up using that, feel free to tag me on the bets that you make. You can end up posting them to Twitter as well tag my show, and then just say, hey, man, this is what I did. I love to see that you guys are having fun because of a brand that we are partnered with. But let's get into this, starting out with the all-stars of the week. Uh, I love the fact that you guys ended up calling that last week, and so we're adjusting it. Or actually, you might have called it just for um, the, a couple of days ago for our stock report, but all-star of the week, Johnny Newton. I actually do end up going through and grading every single rookie that plays. And then I can basically give you guys the top roughly 15 and the bottom 11 performance. But this week it's going to be a little special, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, Johnny Newton's had a pretty slow start to the career, but he is re he is revved up big time by far the highest defensive grade on his team this week, 89 defensive grade with seven pressures and two defensive stops. Granted it was versus a very poor Chicago interior offensive line, but again, it's still great to see that he's having that level of success. You know, just somebody that we all really liked coming into the draft. We heard some potential character concerns about him being, air quotes, uncoachable. But at the same time, I think that he's fantastic. And I'm super happy that he is able to make this level of impact because it was a really slow start. He was pretty much the bottom of the team every single week. Uh, of course, I got into a car crash a couple weeks ago. It's wide on, but face light on, still under concussion protocol. But it is what it is. Um, talk to my neurologist about it, but uh, he's not a fan that I'm doing videos all the time and that's okay, but I love you guys. So I want to continue doing it. That aside, um, I was, I'm now just catching up on Johnny Newton's performances and it's so good to see him performing well. Continuing, we got Lad McConkie, a uh, buddy that I wanted to post a picture of Lad and I, I met him in Mobile. Great dude, by the way, but um, Lad was an excellent pick by the Chargers. Some people believe that he had some back issues, some in general health issues, but um, he's coming out hot. Six for six, a, a 111 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, great performance to see because Lad was somebody that we all thought was like a legitimate starting quality receiver. He's just so dynamic, man. I ended up saying that um, when I first ended up watching him, I forgot that he was draft eligible. And I ended up saying he's going to be a top five pick in the 2025 draft. And if I'm going to be honest, his talent level, if he had an extra year in college, I wouldn't be too surprised based on the quality of this draft coming up. If he that that could have been very true. He could be a top five pick in this year's draft. He was that damn talented, of course, ended up slipping for a multitude of reasons. But continuing on, we got Marvin Harrison Jr. Speaking of a player who's in the top five, uh, Marvin ended up finally bouncing back. And he ended up getting uh, seven targets, six receptions, 111 yards as well, and a touchdown. So it's good to see Marvin's been up and down. Those of you who own him in fantasy definitely know that. But, I mean, the fact is he's already proven to all of us that he is going to be a long-term massive asset there for Arizona. And I think that is awesome. It's great to see that because, again, Marvin's not going to be a bust. People try to act like he is sometimes. But, again, some people are just disgruntled fantasy owners and you know, we all can get a little bit over emotional sometimes and that's okay. Continuing on, we got Tyrone Tracy. He was actually on a more recent one. He was actually on the most recent one of these that I ended up doing. So excited to see how he ended up performing, except it was against my Steelers, but we won. So that's okay. 20 carries, 145 yards and a touchdown on the ground. He had two receptions on top of that out of three targets for five yards and he had five missed tackles forced. Uh, he ended up looking extremely dynamic when I was watching Marcus Bow. I ended up tweeting about how I thought that he was an absolute steal as well. You see, he pops off, man, and it's so good to see that. Uh, we'll talk about another running back as well coming up soon, but you know, there's a lot of a lot of talent out of this most recent draft class, including some guys who were taken on day three. So 
Again, don't write off some of those players when they're day three type of guys. But continuing stock up, the rest of the, so our stars of the week, those are our all stars. Our stars of the week, we have Jaden Daniels. He had 38 throws, 21 completions for 326 yards and a touchdown, three big time throws, zero turnover worthy plays, eight carries, 52 yards, and three missed tackles force. Of course, a good chunk of that yardage and touchdown was based on that final crazy fluke play. But, you know, again, three big time throws, zero turnover worthy plays. That to me is well worth the triumph that maybe the numbers inflate. Even without it, he still would have been on this list. I still love the fact that they ended up putting that in there for him. And he didn't show a primary ground performance, which is awesome to see that he can do it also through the air. Bucky Irving is next. Bucky's fantastic. Nine carries, 44 yards, seven receptions on top of that for 40, and seven missed tackles forced. So on 16 touches, seven missed tackles forced in the NFL is incredible. Bucky ended up testing very poorly in a significant period, a significant number of categories. So it's so good to see that guys who can buck that RAS, um, that RAS agenda ends up still being somebody who can have success because we all loved him. And it's good to see that Bucky is as good in the NFL as he was there for Oregon. Renardo Green, we got a trio of San Francisco players. Renardo Green, Isaac Garendo, and Ricky Pearsall back to back to back. Renardo Green had a 91 defensive grade. Very, He was actually in the list for the stars of the week, but you guys will see. Um, I had to make sure that this list was populated up to the max, and that's okay. Um, the reason he ended up not making it onto the superstars of the week, and is just on the stars of the week, is that he had a 91 defensive grade, two defensive stops, and a forced fumble, uh, but he did allow two receptions out of three targets for 27 yards and a touchdown. So that touchdown knocked him a little bit, but that's okay. He's still a star instead of an all-star. whoop de fucking do Then we go to Isaac Garendo. Honestly, I do think this guy's going to be fantastic. I regret not fully grading him. I'll take it on the chin right there, man. I should have, and I didn't. But, uh, you know, 14 carries, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Three receptions out of four targets for 17 yards on top of that. 17 touches, essentially for uh what 102 yards and a touchdown fantastic performance he is so twitchy as well i'm scared shitless for the future of the niners because not in a bad way in a great way you guys have a top tier corner a top tier receiver and a top tier running back that are all going to be on super cheap contracts when you have a lot of players on more expensive ones uh you guys are doing a fantastic job though because those are three positions you needed to be able to have some cheaper depth on based on the top end talent being so expensive. But continuing on, Ricky Pearsall had himself a game as well. It's not necessarily like a crazy performance, but four receptions on four targets for 38 yards. On top of that, a carry for 39. So five touches. What is that? Set Was it 77 yards? Um, I'm tripping. I, I Yeah, 77 yards. So um, five touches, 77 yards. That's really nice to see. I, it was uh, good to see him healthy as well. Obviously got shot in the chest like early on. Like, God, man. So like, God is great, man. He really is being able to deliver Ricky Pearsall to us to be able to at least like give him a quality of life that hasn't been extremely affected and still have him be such an amazing player. It's unbelievable. So, you know, shout out to Ricky. He's doing a great job there. Even though we thought it was a big reach based on the fact that obviously now they also paid Brandon Ayuk. Um, he, he's proving to be someone who's extremely reliable and extremely trustworthy if you're going to throw him the ball. So I'm excited to see what Ricky's going to do in his career. Cooper DeGene is next. This dude had a big fourth down stop and, uh, he had a 70, 74 defensive grade. He had that defensive stop I talked about and he was, uh, he allowed five receptions on seven targets for 41 yards, but also had a pass breakup as well. Really solid performance by Cooper DeGene. Again, had a big stop on a fourth and down. Drake May is next. He ended up leaving the game with a concussion, but he started off red hot. Three of six for 23 yards and a big time throw. Three carries, 46 yards and a touchdown. But he had a 93 offensive grade before he was knocked out with said concussion. I think that it's right now up in the air if he's going to be cleared for this week. He might end up being me and just not being cleared for a hot minute. But, you know, we want Drake May to have a long career. Losing a game of Drake May in his rookie year, I'd be fine with if it just makes sure that he's healthy for the long run. Kool-Aid McKinstry is next. Uh, he had a 63 defensive grade, and he allowed um, two receptions on four targets for 39 yards and a pass breakup. Honestly, perfectly fine performance in my opinion. I love guys who end up making a play on the ball. That's obviously you'll see that there's a consistency there. If a corner's on a list, most likely they got an interception or a pass breakup. But continuing on, we have Jared Verse as well. Of course, 
Of course. He ended up having the top grade on the Rams defensive line. He had five pressures, two defensive stops, and an 83 defensive grade. He's been an absolute home run hit. I love that for him. And then ending off the first part of the list, because there's a second part, Joe Alt. Uh, 81 pass blocking grade, zero pressures allowed. Easily could have been a star of the week as well. But at the end of the day, these guys are still stars. They're just not all stars. Not because I can't, but because, well, I won. We had 24 or 25 guys, and I ended up just limiting it to 24 based on the fact that I really loved the sheer quantity of players who played so well this past week. Starting out with Brian Thomas in the second part of the list, he has uh, three receptions on four targets, 60 yards and a touchdown. This dude's been just rock solid every single game. I love it for Brian. Jerry and Jones is next. Fantastic performance. 78 defensive grade, two receptions on four targets, 16 yards allowed, and an interception. Kamari Lassiter after that, 78 defensive grade as well. Three receptions on seven targets, 25 yards, and two pass breakups. Great performance by Kamari. He's been a little bit up and down, but more consistently up. I love that for him. Then we continuing on with Edgerin Cooper. Edgerin Cooper has been fantastic for Green Bay, and he was somebody who really accelerated to the top of my list by the end. I think he was a top 15 grade. 74 defensive grade, 90 pass rushing grade. He had a pressure, three defensive stops. He had two receptions allowed on three targets, 42 yards, and a pass breakup. So again, and being able to produce both in the run, as well as the pass, as well as in coverage. I love that for him. Bo Nix, after that, he's been extremely solid. Talk about a great performance against someone who I probably should have put as an all-star of the week. 28 completions, 37 throws, 285 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, two big-time throws, zero turnover-worthy plays. Uh, masterclass performance from Bo. Obviously, you guys know that I was a big fan of Bo Nix. I was a big fan of like the majority of the quarterbacks comparatively to um, other classes that we've studied. But continuing on, we have Austin Booker. He ended up having a 75 defensive grade with two pressures and two stops. Really well-rounded performance from the fourth round pick. Pick or pick number. Uh, next, we have Xavier Leggett. We actually have a pair of Carolina receivers with Leggett. Uh, and Jalen Coker. So for Leggett, he had four receptions on seven targets for 34 yards and a touchdown. Jalen Coker outmatched him. Four receptions on six targets for 78 yards and a touchdown. Jalen Coker's been baller. He pops off the screen, definitely has an it factor. I uh, really wish that we had some Holy Cross all 22, so I could have graded him before. But then Keon Coleman ends this off. Uh, five targets, or excuse me, seven targets, five receptions, 70 yards and a touchdown. Did have a drop in there, but at the end of the day, these receivers are actually making such impactful plays. It makes me so happy to see. Let's look at the duds of the week, starting out with my boy, Drew Phillips. He's had a great year so far, but again, this is a week-by-week -week performance. Um, he did not have a good week. 52 defensive grade. He had two defensive stops, six targets, six receptions, 115 yards allowed, and a touchdown allowed um, to Calvin Austin. He ended up guessing those in. The route ended up being more out, and that ended up being Calvin Austin's touchdown. But, you know, Drew Phillips, he's had a fantastic year. It's okay to have a slip up. Sometimes you need a little bit of a kick in the ass in order to bounce back. Troy Franklin has just been is disappointed to me this entire freaking year, dude. And even from the combine, you guys know how pissed off I was about how poor his gauntlet drill was. But two targets, one reception, six yards, and a drop. I mean, simply put, this dude's supposed to have that instant connection with Bo Nix. He's going to be fine, but, you know, when you end up having two targets, end up receiving one for a minimal gain and then dropping the other one, oh, and then you add that to the multitude of other things. It's like, dude, you're a top 150 pick. You're supposed to be, I think it was, what, 102, 103? You know, you're supposed to be far better than this. Like, he owes it to the Broncos franchise and to Bo Nix as well to be better than that. But... Let's continue on here talking about the rest of the relative duds of the week. Uh, Chris Braswell, he had no production this week in a 40 defensive grade. Not great, but he's had a pretty solid year so far. Christian Haynes, he had 12 pass blocking grade and a defense or in a pressure allowed. Again, not great. Uh, you look at Mason McCormick here. He ended up allowing two pressures and had a 16.3 pass blocking grade. Uh, he's never really known to be an elite pass blocker, more of that um, heavy run blocker. But um, he is not on Seattle. He is on Pittsburgh. We're just going to leave it for the time being, though. Regardless, Spencer Rattler is next. He ended up getting benched. He was 12 of 23 for 156 yards with uh, no big time throws, no big turnover worthy plays, no interceptions, no touchdowns. But uh, being benched, 
not a great start. Not a great look. I honestly think that he's performed better than that. I don't know why you'd necessarily bench him, but then you ended up seeing that Jake Hayner came in and actually performed pretty damn well. Cam Kinchins is next. He's been up and down this year. 46 defensive grade, uh, one reception on one target for five yards and a touchdown. But bottom line, he hasn't really done anything too crazy this past week. Javon Bullard, 44 defensive grade, a defensive stop. Four receptions on five targets for 63 yards and a touchdown. Pretty damn bad performance. Up there with Drew Phillips um, for not having, for being able to, you know, kind of be Swiss cheese. Speaking of Swiss cheese, you got Terry and Arnold who had a 55 defensive grade, two defensive stops, but allowed seven receptions on 10 targets for 95 and a touchdown. This was my worry when went to Detroit. I think he really needed to go more to a Fangio system or to a system where he could have been more of a slot weapon. I just don't think this is the right spot for him. I do worry that he's going to have to have a second part of his career resurgence unless they end up working more around Terry and Arnold's skill set. Trevin Wallace is next. 49 defensive grade, three targets, three receptions, 68 yards, and a touchdown. He never really, like, he was a really raw guy to come out with. I mean, the fact is that he's somebody who should be sitting and resting, but I'm uh, just developing, but he's just, you know, being put into the line of fire. Same thing with Shaw Smith Wade. He's had some very good games this year, but 37 defensive grades, six receptions, eight targets, 35 yards, and a touchdown. Bottom line, not great. And ending off the list, you got Roger Rosengarten. He had four pressures allowed and allowed a 46 pass blocking grade. So once again, Roger Rosengarten's kind of had a roller coaster of a rookie year. But the fact is, at least you've seen the highs, and that's a good start. So that's going to be the video. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.